This call is being recorded. Then all of a sudden, as you're going with the flow, as you're rocking with the waves, you look out across the ocean. There is a single solitary figure moving towards you, walking across the waves on the water. And where the waves are around your rowboat, you notice as this solitary figure is moving towards you, there are no waves there. This one is just walking on the water towards you and has his hands outstretched and then beckoning to you to come forward. You look at him, you look at the water, you look at him, look at the water, and you wonder, how can I do this? How can I go to him on these, on these waters? And all of a sudden, as you think that, the waves become still. The boat stops rocking. Everything becomes calm and peaceful. You look at the figure still approaching you. He is beckoning to you to come forward. Step out on faith. You step out of the boat. You begin to move across the water as if it was a glassy surface. move across closer and closer to him and of course you realize at this point this is i sananda as yeshua just as i did long ago doing the same with those of my disciples i beckon to them to come forward to step out on faith to become one with the water become one with the frequency of the water that is what I did. I raised my frequency to that of the water so that we matched. And then as I matched to the water, I was then able to raise my frequency a bit more and become lighter than the water and be able to simply step out on it because I was no longer heavy, I was lighter than the water itself. I had matched the frequency. I had become one with the water. I had also become one with the elements all around. Just as you can become one with the elements, you can calm the elements, not only outside of yourself, but within yourself. Calm the elements within you. Calm the storm within you. And step out on faith now. Step out on the water. Step out on love. As you come to greet me, and we clasp hands now. Feel the touch. Feel the touch of love. The touch of oneness. Come over you and through you. you Understand at this moment that you are one with me and I am one with you. And together we are one with all that is around us and within us. For you begin to realize that you are one with the source of all things. You are the source. We are the source. We are the one. Now, if you would allow yourself to begin to drift up from this ocean, high up into the sky, high above the earth, look back down as you're moving up. Get that sense of moving away from your body, your physical body, which you can still see way down there. As you move further and further away from it, 
further and further up above the Earth, above the Earth's atmosphere, connecting now to all of the ships that are out here, the planet. And as you begin to become aware of the planets and the sun, become aware then beyond the sun into the solar systems of the galaxy, the many solar systems in the galaxy. And finally, the galaxy central sun. Then through the galaxy central sun into all of the galaxies, all of the solar systems within all those galaxies. And know that all of those solar systems have a central sun, and all of those galaxies have a central sun. And all are connected to the central sun of the universe itself, to source itself, to love incarnate itself, to the one. And from that one, from that source now, See the energies of this sun beginning to swirl and move about and explode, energy exploding on this sun with intense heat and cold, intense energy. From that energy, from that source, a flare of energy, a pulse of energy shoots from it, coming down through all of the galaxies, the central suns of all of the galaxies, and all of the central suns within the solar systems of the galaxies, all the way down to the central sun of this galaxy, and then through this sun of the solar system to the Earth burst through all of the heavenly forces above the earth, through all of the ships, all of the consciousness of all of the ships, connecting all. All is connected as an energy web, connecting all the way to the one. And this energy now shoots down to the earth, going down through your physical bodies, can see it as a golden light or an electric blue light, whichever works better for you. Shooting down through your body into the earth, anchoring to the center of the earth, to the core of the earth. And back up from the core of the earth, back up through your body, through all of the heavenly forces, all of the heavenly bodies, all the way back to the central sun of the universe, connecting you, your physical body, your astral body, your etheric, your causal, your mental, all of you, all of the consciousness that is you, to the source of all things. Know that you have always had that connection, never not been connected. Now be aware of that pulse of energy that came to the earth as a wave of energy moving across the planet, a tsunami of love, if you will. Spreading across the planet, bringing consciousness, higher consciousness, higher vibration to all of life forms across the entire planet. But not only the planet, but the solar system and the galaxy. All are transformed by this energy, by this love from source itself. Take a moment to feel what that energy 
not only would be like, but is like. It moves through all of your body. Now let yourselves begin to find your way back, back towards your physical body, bringing your astral, your etheric body back in, connecting back to your physical body, always knowing, though, that you are not your physical body. It is but an instrument or a tool, a vessel, to use for this life. Let yourself now come back into a complete state of consciousness and circulation, fully revitalized and refreshed. I am Sananda. As always, it is a wonderful pleasure to be able to be with you, to share with you, to bring you these messages, these messages of love and hope and oneness and joy and peace and calm. For it is all about a continued acclimation to these energies that are coming into the planet, these waves of energy that have been, so to speak, bombarding the planet for some time now, but increasing in intensity over a period of time. Wave after wave after wave, and more waves are coming. I want you to think or just picture for a moment the ocean, as the waves come in from the ocean, come on to the shore. At first they come rather small, then picking up intensity, getting larger and larger, stronger and stronger, more and more intense, until that final wave that comes in, washes across the entire area. Think of this as that wave of energy that will eventually come to the planet as the changeover or the event occurs. But before that, many smaller waves any smaller happenings that have been coming in, that many of the channeling sources are talking about now. These waves of energy, these dominoes that are falling and will continue to fall, all that is happening to bring you into the higher vibrations, to keep you there longer and longer in those higher vibrations. For those of you that are resonating to these words now, you are no longer in the third dimension. You may think you are because your programming continues to keep you in that state of mind. But you are not there. Your consciousness is not there. Yes, it can slip down in there every so often if you allow it to. But you can bring it right back out much quicker each time you do this. You do not need to wallow in it any longer. 
in depression, in states of illness. You do not need to do that any longer. You can move beyond it and stay beyond it. Because the earth herself, Gaia herself, has moved through the ascension and is continuing to do so, and yet holds a space for those of mankind to continue to have the opportunity to acclimate to these energies just as you are, to continue to be able to move through these waves of ascension as they are beginning now to come in more and more. True, you have not reached those three waves that have been spoken of yet, not in your physical bodies, but in your higher bodies you have. It has already occurred. The event has already happened at the higher vibrational levels. It only needs to manifest now. When the vibrations have increased enough across the planet so that all of you have acclimated enough to be able to withstand that energy, and we of the Ascended Masters, the Celestial Host, the Galactics, the Agarthans, all of us are watching this process watching this ascension process as it continues to move through, continues to move through this transitioning, transition that is occurring now at this time. As the many truths are beginning to come forward, beginning to be revealed, and will be revealed more and more. For the truth cannot be held back. It must be told. It must come forward. For ascension to fully occur, the truths need to be revealed. You need to be able to have the space open to you, to be able to move into those higher vibrations whenever you feel the urging, the encouragement. Whenever you feel your consciousness reach out to the higher vibrations, the higher levels around you. And as you do that, as you continue to reach higher and higher, you will find that which you are reaching for. You will realize that you have moved in or moved out of that old programming that continues to hold some of you back at times. I say some of you, and I say at times pur purposefully, because there are those times where some of you still continue to fall. But even when you fall, you do not stay fallen. You continue to reach up, and your higher selves and your guides reach for you and pull you up out of the shadows, back into the light, back into those higher vibrations and therefore higher dimensional frequency. It is all up open to you now, my friends. It is all open to you to step aside, just as I did as Yeshua, I stepped aside and I say, Father, I give this all up to you now. I step aside. I and my Father are one. It is up to you now to do the same. Step aside. Let the Father within you doeth the works your higher self continue to move you forward your higher self will not hold you back only the lower self 
the lower ego self and hold you back. Let go now. Move on. Let the forces of light come shining through. And then once those forces of light shine within you, then you shine that light out to all around you. I am Sananda. I leave you now in peace and love and oneness. And I ask you to continue to call forth, not only for yourselves, but for those around you, for them also to reach to their higher selves, to pull themselves out of the quagmire of the 3D illusion. Peace and love be with all of you. Om Mani Padme Om Ma Om Mani Padme Om Ma Om Ma Om Greetings to you. One who serves here is Shoshana with us here. Yes. Very good. Then we are ready to move on. Do not have a message directly, Shoshana. Do you have message for? No. Then we move on with question here. Uh, would there be questions here? Yes, I. this is Linda, and I have two James gave me from an email. The first one is from a, a woman who essentially is asking, when we ascend, what happens to our bodies? Do we, at a, when we ascend, do our bodies remain in physical form, or is there full consciousness, uh, is full DNA restoration? Um, could you just explain that as it would it apply to us when these waves come? Yes, we can tell you is this is what this is all about, people. This is what this is we have, we have been working with you is to bring you to a point where you are uh, moving through this ascension process through the transition that is occurring now and moving to a point where you are. Uh, Creating your light body within your physical body, if that makes any understanding for you. You are uh, taking your physical body along with you because you are crystallizing the cellular structure in your body. It is becoming more crystalline rather than carbon-based. This is not an overnight sensation, for you would not be able to withstand the pressure of doing this directly at this point. But it is a process that is occurring over time here, and more importantly, over vibration. As your vibrations continue to increase, you continue to move more and more through this ascension process so that you are able to uh, take the energies, withstand the energies as they continue to come in so they do not uh, cripple your central nervous system and these types of things that can occur and allow your kundalini energy to fully rise through the process. For as some of you know that when the kundalini rises, uh, when it is not time, when the vibration has not reached a high enough level, if it is done taking heaven by storm, you might say, then you can find that your central nervous system is not ready for this and can create much havoc, much illness, can create insanity, and all kinds of other things can come as a result of this, including that which is the uh, spontaneous combustion of some that has occurred in the past when this uh, happens here. Also, uh, some have gone into what you call the funny farm, the mental institutions and things of this nature because of this kundalini energy rising too quickly. But it is very safe as it is happening now because we, the ascended masters and all of those that are working with you and of course your higher selves are monitoring this entire process. So you are moving to a point where you are 
beginning more and more to crystallize your cellular structure and your DNA is coming back online or will be coming back more fully online so that you are able to take your physical body through the ascension uh, in a complete manner, whereas before you would have had to have dropped the physical body and become the light body and leave the physical behind. That is no longer the case here for most, not all, but for most will be able to have this process uh, finalize when the vibrations have increased enough. Okay, uh, Shoshana? No, you have explained it. Very good. Then we are done with this question. Thank you. I now have a question from Dave, also concerning the waves. Mm -hmm. Asking if you could give a clear example of the three waves of ascension and how they work. Shoshana, would you like to begin here? No. Very good. Then what we can tell you about the three waves of ascension is they are exactly that. They are waves of consciousness that are going to be coming into the planet. Uh, they are coming at this time, actually, and they will continue to increase and increase and increase. And when these waves of ascension fully begin, there is what is you, those of you, this group and many other groups and many of the, uh, the light workers and light warriors across the planet are being prepared to be in that first wave of ascension. Whether you will be or not is up to you. It is not up to us. It is not something you attain. It is not a, a title or anything like that that you attain. It is not even initiations that you go through that you can attain this. It is simply a choice that you are making at this time to allow for these energies to continue to come in and continue to acclimate within your body. And by that, you are then going to be able, again, as you choose, to be in that first wave of ascension. And as you move through that wave, you will realize at that point that you are in those higher vibrations and therefore being in those higher vibrations in a higher level of consciousness. And in that higher level of consciousness, you are now in a position where you are thinking in terms of service to others rather than service to self at that point. And when you are thinking of service to others, your immediate concern is going to be to others. So therefore, you will likely, most of you will likely want to turn around and go back and assist those others that are coming after you. And that is the process as you move through these waves of assisting those that come after you. And then those that come after you will go through this as well and go back and assist those others. Now, when we say go back, that does not mean you are going up on ships and then you will decide, oh, I've had enough R&R uh, &R here, so now I will come back to the planet and assist. No, it is not that at all. It is not about leaving. It is about moving into higher consciousness, higher vibrations, higher dimensional frequency. And as you do that, you will, again, as we say, realize that it is all about helping your fellow man. And that is what you will be about doing at that point. Okay? Shoshana, anything to add here? I believe you have explained it perfectly. Very good. Would there be other questions here? I have a question. Yes. It's, it's Drusilla. Um, I was wondering when the, the large wave comes and goes through the uh, solar system, will it free Saturn from her chains? Will it free I, Saturn from what now? From what I'm, I heard, um, Saturn is actually being held by the Dracos. The, the rings are actually holding her in. Is that true? When we speak of the ascension process, we are speaking of not only here on this planet, but the entire solar system and even beyond right. the galaxy. So 
act in itself would likely answer your question because okay. there will be no more darkness anywhere at that point. So what I heard is correct. It is correct. It is a happening that is uh, going to reverberate. What happens here, we will say, is going to reverberate across the entire galaxy and even beyond that. Great. But we will Thanks. just stay with the galaxy for now. Thank you. That's great. So, Shani, anything? No, we, we believe you have explained it. Would there be other questions? <clears throat> Yes, Lenny Sir, St. Shoshana, this is Lorelai. Hello, dear brother and sister. Um, I would like to know, um, I've recently come across uh, an individual who um, is pretty powerful psychically, and um, we can remember having some lives together um, where we were working for, for the good, if you will, or for the light. Um, but now what he... He seems to be doing is, um, and I'm curious about this because I, I know I don't want to get swooped up in energies that I don't want to get swooped up in. And um, he, he seems to be tooling around the galaxy, going here, there, and all over the place, literally, and he can see it in vivid technicolor. And I know because he showed it to me in my dream once. And so I saw that one flash of it, and that was it. And I'd like to learn that, you know. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm wondering, though, if his, like all of his energy goes into that and not really so much that I can see into like a, a light worker communication with the West, rest of the world. Is that what you're calling the fourth dimensional sort of magnetism or is it that it's more important for him to do that work out there than the actual work with the humans here? Does that make any sense? We, we, we do not, we do not understand. Okay, so uh, uh, let me rephrase. So uh, this person's energy is very much like into spending like 12, 14, 16 hours um, literally um, teleporting himself psychically here, there, and everywhere. He sees it in vivid technicolor. And, and, and this is something that I would love to learn, and he says he'd like to teach me. But I'm also concerned that this is a fourth-dimensional thing what one who serves is spoken to uh, as being sort of um, hypnotized by the fourth dimension and the power that we have in the fourth dimension, or is it, okay, this is whatever work he's doing out there is more important maybe than spending the time out here with the humans. That's what I'm trying to figure out. This is a, this is a dilemma. This is a difficult thing to approach or address as, this is your experience of this individual, and we cannot know what is more important to him or less important to him or what direction he chooses to go in. All, all things are, are a puzzle. All things are parts of a picture so what so his importance in the fourth dimension his importance with human beings it is irre, is not relevant he chooses his experience he chooses to be in the fourth dimension he chooses to work with humans he chooses all of these things as he chooses those things based on what experiences he wishes to have so we cannot put a finger on this and say this is better, this is more important, this is less important. We cannot do that if you can understand our approach here. And that's, I don't know if I make myself clear. I'm not trying to ask that. I'm trying to ask, is that, is that a fourth dimensional thing? I, I'm a concern to get involved with someone that might be, be just pulling my energy just to tool around in yes. the fourth dimension and hypnotically... Is that yes. what that is? Yes, dear sister, we feel your ambivalence. And we apologize for not asking if we could share our perspective with you, but we assumed we could. And we sent no, no, your ambivalence. No. We we sent your ambivalence because we have it as well. So Okay. You must be cautious 
as we are easily drawn in by magicians and magic and great experiences, we are easily drawn in by that. So your ambivalence is correct. So simply take what you can, enjoy what you can, and create a boundary, if that makes sense Thank to you. you. Yes, it does. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yes. Namaste. Yes, and we would add here that his path is his path and your path is your path. And you have a saying, dance to the beat of your own drummer. So whatever that beat is for you, you dance to that. Allow the higher self, your higher self, to guide you through this entire process. And don't let another individual that uh, may or may not be uh, delving into areas where they need to be more careful. Yes. That is what we are saying here to you. Have caution Thank here. Do not throw caution to the wind in this case. Yes. Ah, that I appreciate. Because, I mean, it's very, very uh, in, enticing when you get the, you never saw the Technicolor and suddenly you see the Technicolor. You're like, oh, man, <laughs> I want that, but let me just look here. You know? Yes. So. You, can, you can do that, but do it with much protection. When you when we do this these things with you during these calls and also during your advances, there is much protection. There is nothing that can interfere in those experiences unless you bring it in yourself, allow it to come in. You see? But there is so much protection, and we have been working with you in those experiences to do somewhat exactly what you are speaking of, but doing it in a very safe, uh, safe, calculated way to allow for the continuing process to occur within each and every one of you. When we do these things, each and every one of you are being monitored, okay? And we will not allow for anything to occur beyond what you are ready for at that time. Okay, I appreciate it. So could it so could not being protected, this is what I was wondering too, open up some sort of a portal to something that I didn't want? Is that what you're saying? That is correct. That can happen. We agree with that. Happen. We agree. So, okay, so I need to just choose the times and say this is the time, not any old time, and this is when I okay it and put the protections up and go about it that way. Yes. As opposed yes. to, yeah, okay. Thank you, thank you. That really gives me a lot. I appreciate that. Yes. Would there be any other questions here? Yes, hello, one who serves in Shoshana. Um, my question is really not so much a question, but a clarification. Is that okay? Okay. So, um, a few days ago, I had a dream where there was, um, must have been a scout ship because it was like, uh, maybe one or two, one or two, I call them people in it. And then I thought it was just my house. Hold, please. We cannot understand what you are saying directly here. Okay. Please be more it's, specific. Okay. It's uh, a clarification that I require between a dream I had and um, what the information that, that came through a channel. So a few days ago, I had a dream where there was like a scout ship because it was just uh, with one or two people in it, and it was in trouble. So when I saw it, I, I beckoned for them to land on my property. And when they landed, the, the, the guy came out, he was very friendly, but then again, um, appeared as a lady, uh, so there was like a, guy, a man and a woman, I invited them into my house and we were talking, laughing, and they were telling us stories about what happens on the ship. Then as we were talking, another two gentlemen appeared 
although they came more like they were coming to protect these, these two that landed first. But then when they realized that we're all just laughing and having a good time, they joined us in. So, um, like I then when on awakening, I thought, well, maybe I made some kind of contact uh, or that you have been telling us about. However, a few days later, I read a channel that said contact would be uh, in a physical waking uh, moment. So I'm just trying to understand um, is it going to happen in both ways, both in our lucid dreaming and in our awake, awakeness, or is, it, is the physical contact going to be considered when we are actually awake? So what you are asking basically is that is contact with those of the galactics going to occur in, with your physical body or only with your astral body and etheric during your sleep state uh, or meditative state? This is your question. And yeah. we would answer this by saying it can be both. It can be both. It, not that it will be both, but it can be both. In other words, more and more of you will begin to experience these types of uh, experiences, we will say here, during your dream state, during your meditative state, and even during your waking state in terms of a connection to those that are coming to uh, experience with you. In other words, your family from the stars, all of them are, are coming back. And they are going to be interacting with you in many different various ways just as they are beginning to do now, as Kara is coming through, and, and of course Ashtar, and Sananda, and so on and so on. And they are all coming and experiencing with you in these different various ways at this time. Now, it is moving, though, to a point where there will be the physical contact as well, or again, can be the physical contact as well. It is not something that you can create. It is not something that you can make happen. You cannot simply say, I want to be visited and therefore you're going to land in my yard. It is not going to be like that. But it is something that has been preconceived, preset, you might say. But it can be uh, affected over a period of time by your raising your vibrations, just as many of you are. And many of you, as you are raising your vibrations, are altering some of those uh, contracts, you might say, that have occurred that you, uh, that you agreed to earlier on, and you can alter those contracts. And in altering those contracts, now you have an opportunity to be one of those that can be visited in these different ways, both uh, non-physically and physically, when the vibrations have increased enough within you to be able to allow for that, uh, that vibrational exchange to occur that will be necessary to have the physical interaction with them. Okay? Shoshana, anything you can add? May we share our perspective with you, Harriet? Yes. Thank you. Yes. We would tell you that you are an individual that has many dreams, and dreams are not what we think they are. Dreams are a reality that we experience. Perhaps uh, we wish to have those experiences in the physical because we think they are more real if we have them in the physical. That is the perspective of many. Well, if I just have that experience in the physical, then I will know for sure that I have had that experience. What we would tell you is that you are favored 
and it is a favorable experience to have a scout ship be invited to land in your backyard and that those that occupied the scout ship could come into your home and visit with you. What a wonderful experience. We would tell you to relish the experience, to enjoy those experiences, and not to be too concerned whether or not you will have them in the physical because the fourth and fifth dimension that you experience in your quote-unquote dream state is just as palpable, just as real as any reality. Namaste. Wonderful. Yes, it is. Very good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Would there be any other further questions here? Can you hear me? This is Mary Lou. We hear you, dear one. Yes. Oh, good. I've been trying to unmute myself for 20 minutes now. I'm exhausted. No, I'm. <laughs> I I have a question relating to. Um, is the use of the, the protocol of Pandora uh, during meditation, does that help to accelerate uh, the change of the physical body into uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I keep thinking diamond, but it's uh, crystal. <laughs> Yes, what you are speaking of is the Pandora Protocol and many others that have come forward and are coming forward yet are all tools. Crystals are tools, tarot cards are tools, etc., etc. It is uh, simply that the human body, the human consciousness needs those tools at this time to uh, to feel that they are doing something real, as Shoshana gave here earlier. And we would say to you that all of these things are real beyond what you are believing could be real. In other words, it is not something that happens, that has to happen at a physical level only for it to be real. So these protocols that are being given by the Pleiadians and, again, others that are going to be coming forth, coming from the Cobra experience and, and others as well, are going to, uh, the, all of they are doing is assisting in bringing you into these higher vibrations and, and once you are in those higher vibrations to be able to, uh, to experience the well-being that comes from those higher vibrations rather than the illnesses and the debilitating uh, uh, depressions and all of these kinds of things that uh, are a, a still continuing to be a part of your programming experiences here. Okay? So, Shana, anything to add? I think you have explained it well. Very good. <laughs> this is uh, sufficient for you, dear one? Thank you very much. I will continue to use that during my uh, meditation until I understand it thoroughly. Very good. And please... While you are at it, do not forget to work with the crystals as you had been guided to earlier. It is very important for you to continue the work with those crystals and the remembering of who you are, who you were, but more importantly, who you are with the use of those crystals. Yes, thank you very much. I will uh, continue even more. Are there any other further questions now before we release channel? One who serves us is Gina. Yes. Hi, dear friend. Uh, a question that's been really on my mind for quite a long time, and I guess I, I really would like to ask it. Um, you know, when we do the meditations, when I, I wasn't at the um, advance when we did the December one, but that was magnificent when when you and Yeshua Sananda took us on that back into Jerusalem or back into the time of Christ on, on, on uh, earth. Anyway, that was so magnificent. And 
my question, I, I'm very moved, I'm very emotional anytime Yeshua comes into conversation or Sananda. More Yeshua for some reason, but really, really moved um, to tears, emotion. And um, my thoughts have always been, you know, somehow I'm, I'm just kind of in the, those thoughts that I may have not been on the planet walking next to Yeshua during those times, but I was above in a starship guiding the whole time and being with Yeshua through that, that sense. This has always been on my mind for so long since that, uh, that time of December. Um, I know you can't really give us uh, information like that, but boy, I would love to know if that's, if that's anywhere close to where I am feeling. So you are wondering if you were above the experiences that were going on with Yeshua during that lifetime. If you are above exactly. in a ship looking in a down ship. on the process. Is that right. Your being part of yes, being part of all of that, but in the in the guiding and, and protecting through uh in and around, but being in a ship, being a galactic, not a human First in the of all, at the time. In order for us in order for us to ask answer this question, we must first ask you a question. Where mm -hmm. are you receiving this understanding from? Well, um, I just felt that and then I would, I have a pendulum that I always uh, communicate through and, and then I would ask, you know, is, is this feeling, is this where I'm heading, is this correct? Or, and so, yes, through a pendulum. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you have already received the confirmation that this is correct. Is that right? Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. I was told yes, but I just then, wanted to see your point of view, I suppose. And you would say, why would you then question it beyond that? True that. And the only that, answer to that, the only answer to that, would be that you do not fully believe that what you are doing is accurate. So Well, the, only because so much more leads to that. Um, the starships that, that I see on a nightly base, uh, you know, just a lot of activity. Uh, the first starship that I saw, saw uh, there was te tele telepathy between us. Uh, took me home, the starship, so there was a Something huge was there, there and didn't understand it for many years until I looked back. And I went, oh, my goodness, what the heck happened here? So that's why I'm thinking, boy, I think I belong to the galactic community uh, more than living on the earth more of those lifetimes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is accurate. Very good. So that, that we can confirm. And the rest that you gave as to the experience at the time of Yeshua can be confirmed mm -hmm. by your going within yourself just as you have and receiving the answer just as you have. That should okay. give you a hint of uh, the correctness of where you are going with this. May we share? Yes, please do, Shoshana. Our dear, our dear sister, may we share our perspective with you? Yes, dear. Here's what we would say, and we would say this to all. It is important as a lifetime progresses, as we live from day to day in a lifetime, that the experiences that we have are savored, are enjoyed, and are accepted and allowed. The one who serves often says, go with the flow. What prevents a human being from immersing themselves in the experience and feeling the experience and allowing the experience is analyzing the experience. So it does not matter truly if you were in a galactic body or in a earth body or in, in a ship or on the ground, none of that matters. What matters is that you sense and feel and savor and enjoy the connectedness of the lineage of Yeshua.
mantra to yourself and understand that that is the reality that you are enjoying, not necessarily how you got there, but that you are there, and that the emotion that you feel and that you sense when you recall these things are because you are very connected. You cannot have a deep sense of emotion and a deep sense of devotion and love if you are not connected. You are closely connected because of those feelings. We hope that we made sense to you. Namaste. Very good. Then uh, we are ready to release channel here at this point. Before we do, Shoshana, anything final message? We do not have a message. Very good. Then all we say to all of you is to uh, keep keep going. Do not let yourself become uh, uh, slack in your energy, in your continuing to move forward. Uh, do not become stagnant in those things which you know to do, in those things which you are being guided to do, whatever they might be. Go forward and continue to uh, allow the, the light to continue to not only anchor within you, but to continue to spread from you. This is very important as you continue to move through this ascension process and to become the, uh, the being that you uh, not only are meant to be, but always have been. Shanti, peace be with you. Be the one.